Hello, this is Time Served, and on this 4th of July, I would like to thank all the brave men and women who have fought bravely for our rights and independence. However, when it comes to dopes like this, I sure wish the only rights he had to bear arms were his ability to wear wife beaters in public. In this TPO case, we have a mother in the closet, literally, and an alleged pew pew toting father who likes to expose more than his pistola. As the case progresses, you will see that Dad is scorned and blows Mama's online career up to her entire family on social media. So sit back, grab your cold beverage, and watch this Georgia fireworks display from Judge Guy's courtroom. And then as a bonus, I threw in a wild, short little custody case out of Texas where the judge is literally telling Dad to return the child or we'll come get her. Enjoy, nerds. Order was uh, filed on June 15th, 2023, and we are here today to consider whether or not the ex parte protective order will continue for the next 12 months. Uh, while you are both unmuted, I'm going to ask that you raise your right hand. I'm going to get you sworn in. Do you swear or affirm all testimonies true and correct under penalty of perjury? First, Miss North. Yes. And then next, Mr. Brickley. Yes. All right. Thank you. And you can both go ahead and mute your uh, determine whether or not the ex parte temporary protective order becomes a 12 month protective order. This was filed under the Family Violence Act. So the court will be listening from the petitioner to hear whether or not there has been uh, evidence submitted that there was an act of family violence or battery and that there is a and or stalking and that there is a reasonable likelihood of those acts continuing into the future should the protective order not be issued today. So those are the the two elements of this case I will be looking to hear when the petitioner um, testifies. Once the petitioner has testified, I will then hear from the respondent um, and both sides will therefore get a thorough chance to be heard. Um, if, Ms. Bream, if you could go ahead and mute your camera for me. Thank you. Um, after that, I will hear um, a, any summation that you wish to give, any sort of closing argument you wish to give as to what you're asking the court for on both sides, and then I will issue my order. If you have witnesses that you intend to call, please let me know that at this time. Does either party have witnesses they intend to call? All right. Then with that, Ms. Uh, North, if you'll go ahead and unmute yourself and state your full name. My name is Asia North. All right. And how do you know Timothy Brickley? He's my baby's father. All right. And how long have you known him? Um, for about four years. Okay. And how many children do you have with him? Just one. All right. And has he legitimated that child? No. Okay. All right. What led to you requesting this temporary protective order? Um, what led me up to doing this protective order today is... um. I, me and Mr. Brickley, we had ended up calling our relationship quits about a few weeks ago. We called our relationship quits a few weeks before the TPO was filed. Um, so he was going to see his girlfriends. I had my guy friend. He was actually coming over to see me on the event in question that caused me to file this TPO. Um, my guy friend. Yeah. Okay, so my daughter, me and my daughter, we was at home. He was sleeping in the living room. My guy friend actually came to pull up to bring me something, some alcohol to drink because I couldn't leave. I had my daughter. So I left my daughter in the bed and I went outside. Mr. Brickley was in the living room and he was asleep as well. I went outside. I went outside for 10 minutes and then we look up and we see Mr. Brickley coming down the stairs with the dog. We have a little puppy. And so my friend, he was like, what's going on? Like I'm like, he probably just walking the dog. Instead of him walking the dog, he walks down at least about 20 feet to the car. We wasn't even parked in front of my apartment. We was parked down at least like seven parking spaces away from my apartment. He walks down to the car, my friend's car, walks around to the passenger side door, proceeds to open his car door and says to me, what I tell you about leaving my child, what I tell you about leaving your child in the house by herself. I say, she's not in the house by herself. You was in the house. He say, what I tell you about leaving my child, what, no, what I tell you about leaving your child in the house by herself. I said, she's not by herself. You're in the living room. Within us going back and forth, my guy friends entered being, and he says, I'm, I don't have nothing to do with that, but why are you opening my car door? 
what is the, what you opening my car door for any problems y'all have you need to wait till she come up to the house you don't need to be touching my car so with him saying that that caused mr brickley to pull out his gun and point it at me and my guy friend while we're sitting in his car so he pulls out his gun and he say then i tell you next time this nigga comes to my house i'm gonna kill him and he kept saying that he kept saying that keep in mind my one-year-old daughter is in the house by herself howling and screaming because he came outside to pull a gun on someone so once he did that i tried to take out my phone and call the police he snatches my phone out my hand and put it in his pocket my friend proceeds to get out the car and get on his phone and i believe he was calling his mom or one of his guy friends or something so they start exchanging words mr brickley and my guy friend i try to walk away i'm trying to tell my guy friend he just needs to leave i'm about to go in the house and I'm trying to proceed to walk away to go in the house. As I'm trying to go in the house, Mr. Brickley is standing at our, like our foyer area that leads to our porch steps. He's just standing right there and he's making all kind of ill threats. Nigga, I kill you on Big Whoop, that's gang affiliate. I do this, I do that. Nigga, you ain't this, nigga, you ain't that. My friend is in his car um, attempting to pull off, but he's still exchanging words with Mr. Brickley, but he's in his car like at least 50 60 paces away in his car i end up going upstairs because again my baby is in the house screaming and crying at this time i did not know that his older brother was in the house at this time so when i walk in his oldest brother is standing in the kitchen fixing himself something to eat so i just get my baby and i proceed to go ahead and get our stuff because i was about to try to leave because at that time i didn't feel safe so i still hear them two outside arguing i'm inside next thing i know i hear his brother charging out the door he got his gun as well so now it's timothy and his brother they're outside basically provoking this man that's in his car he never got out of his car and came and provoked them he never draw a gun on mr brickley at that time he never came on our property our porch and provoked anybody in our household mr brickley came and provoked him so i'm in the house all i hear is gunshots let off i don't know who shot at who i don't know what shots was let off my friends say that his brother shot at him and he shot back mr brickley says that he shot and then they shot back i don't know what happened i was inside so that's what led me up to getting this tpo today because like i say i have my one-year-old daughter we just moved into that apartment in april and for him to unconsciously do that with my daughter being inside the home if i had not known this gentleman like how i known him anything could have happened with mr brickley pulling his weapon out this man could have felt threatened and shot me and mr brickley this man could have felt threatened still and came back and shot up the house with my daughter inside the house plenty of things could have happened and i feel like he's not taking in accountability of the safety and the living situation of my daughter we could have got put in out for that anything could have happened he also put me in jeopardy because he also put the gun literally in my face across my face so if he would have shot the gun and the backfire anything would have happened i could have got shot as well with me being in the car um that was the main reason of me filing this tpo there were other incidents um prior but that this was the main exact reason why i did it okay so let me let me ask you you say did you moved into this apartment in april is yes. the apartment in your name his name your both names it's both of our names his name is just first but it's both of our names on there it's his name my name and my daughter okay and um at the time that this incident occurred you were separated but still living in the same house together correct correct okay. yes have you heard from mr brickley since he was served with this protective order i have not heard from him but i have an only fans account he did subscribe to my only fans account on june 22nd um also i had mistakenly logged into his account and I logged right back out because I was trying to log into mine. And he texted my grandmother and told her to uh, tell her to stay off of my accounts. He also was logged into my grandmother's Netflix accounts. And I had to change the passwords to get him off of there because my grandma pays for that Netflix account. Okay. But, you referenced um, some incidents that had happened before this. Has he ever been physically violent or threatened you with a firearm before? um physically violent yes firearm no um when, when was he last physically violent with you 
last physically violent that was reported was January of 2022. That was last reported. Um, actually physical. Um, we actually got into a physical altercation about three to four days prior to this incident. I would like to say on the 30th or the 31st of May. And what happened in that incident? Um, I had been texting him, texting him, texting him. He didn't come into my house till five, five, six o'clock in the morning. And I had been asking him where he was, where he was. And he didn't want to respond. That re resulted into us having physical words going back and forth. So I was angry. So I acted like I was about to pack up his stuff. I, not act, I did put his stuff and remove it out of my bedroom and set it in the hallway. And then he returned in retaliation when then grabbed all my clothes out the drawer and threw them out on the porch. And then also in return, my key is on like a wallet key ring. He actually snatched my key off the wallet key ring and took my key. And I had to go to the rent office and get a new key to be able to enter and have access to my home. Okay. And prior to that incident, uh, what was the most recent physical altercation between the two of you? Um, prior to the one uh, a couple of days before the yes. shooting. Yes. Um, Would that be the January 2022? Yes. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you want to tell me at this time? Also, within that incident that happened a couple of days before the shooting, like I say, we did exchange physical altercation. I tried to upload the pictures of my bruises and things, but I had problems converting my things over to PDF. So as we was fighting an altercation, I did pick up a knife. And when I picked up the knife, he was trying to grab the knife out my hand. Like, I guess he was thinking I was going to stab him, but I had it for my own protection. And he was trying to grab it out my hand and he ended up cutting his own hand. And he was basically trying to tell the police and stuff that I picked up the knife and cut him and tried to stab at him. Also, well, the okay, day let me, let me interrupt you for one moment. Uh, yes, the, police, the police were called on the incident that happened three to four days before this last one. Yeah, I called them to let them know that he took my key. I didn't let them know nothing about the fighting incident. Okay. I didn't tell anything about that fighting incident until the night I called the police on the night of the shooting. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything further? Um, um, other than that, um, his brother, his older brother, like I say, I stated previously, he's still staying there. Um, I just recently had an issue where my light the light bill was due on june 14th his brother had agreed to pay us 250 dollars a month to help with the bills inside the household um from what his brother had told me i also had recording of that again i couldn't switch it over to pdf but his brother's exact words were i gave tim the money so i don't know what you want me to do about the light bill not being paid so okay, he gave so to so who all's living in your apartment right now? His brother, myself, and my daughter. And okay. I'm actually on the, the verge of trying to remove the brother. Okay. All right. Thank you. You can go ahead and put yourself on mute now. Mr. Brickley, you were previously sworn. You can go ahead and unmute, sir. And you're welcome to respond to the yes. testimony that we have heard from Miss North. Okay. So the incident in which the police was called about the guns. Mm -hmm. I never pulled my gun out until he presented his weapon, for one. Two, my daughter was already up as soon as she walked out the door. That's what woke me up to initiate me to go outside. I was also walking the dog, but my daughter was also up. That's why I even came to the car to ask her why she was out here. Because I wasn't aware that she knew if my daughter was sleeping or not. As far as the shooting, I never fired my weapon. He was shooting as we were, me and my brother were literally walking into the house while he was shooting. I guess he was in front of the neighborhood or whatever. We did have a exchange of words. And also it was literally in front of the apartment. All right. And did you um, go to the passenger side of the vehicle where Miss North was and open that door to speak to her? Yes, to speak to her. Okay. And. Yeah. No whatsoever. I'm sorry. There was no aggression whatsoever. I was literally okay. trying to understand why you outside and my daughter's in the room by herself. You okay. didn't even tell me that she was going out there. You just walked outside while I was asleep. Okay. And, and, 
and just one second and um at some point did whether it be before or after the guy friend did did you point your weapon across where she was sitting i never pointed my gun at him i literally grabbed my gun when he grabbed his gun he grabbed his gun as he was getting out the car i assumed he was going to walk out i mean walk around the car basically trying to shoot me or whatever so i was really preparing myself for whatever he had going on because i was literally talking to her and he had his little input or whatever okay and um do you recall a couple of days before that um the, the altercation that she refers to yes i had been out i had got off work i had went to a friend's house i didn't come home to like five six in the morning we not together as she earlier explained to you we're not together so why would you be blowing my phone I did come on my way home actually my brother texted my phone saying she's packing up your clothes what's going on she's on the phone cussing and all this other stuff so when i do get home all my stuff is packed by the door i'm trying to so yes i did grab her stuff and i also packed her stuff and i also grabbed the key that i bought which initiated her to grab a knife and attack me with the knife when you say it was the key that you bought what do you mean by that I bought the key that she has. I bought the key for her and my brother. Were you not given keys when you rented the location? Gave us one key. Oh, one key. So you made copies. Copies of the key and gave them. Okay. The key. Okay. And and one other question on the date of the um, firearm exchange or firearm, just you know whatever was going on with the gun. On that date, did you take her phone from her? No, I didn't take her phone. I'm sorry. No, I didn't take her phone. Okay. Okay. Anything further that you want to tell me as it relates to this uh, request for a 12 month protective order? As far as me being a threat, I'm no type of threat to her or my child. Like I'm very nonchalant. I like when she tries to argue, I literally sit there and don't say anything or I try to walk away. That's what makes her get aggressive with me. And that's what happened basically, what, January the 20th, that day? I basically got locked up for that. So basically, we got into an argument. Well, she was arguing at me, and I wasn't initiating into the argument. So that made her get aggressive with me. I wound up, it got kind of physical, and I wound up pushing her off of me, and she wound up hitting her head. And that's why they sent me to jail because the ambulance came and they said she had a concussion. So they had to take me to jail because of that. Okay. And that was January of 2022. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I, anything anything I, further? I have never initiated any type of confrontation with her. I'm not a threat to her or my child. In actuality, she's more of a threat to herself and my child than I am. As long as I like. I've, as long as I've known her, she's 24 years old and she's tried to take her own life at least five to six times. Three of those times being with me. Two of those occasions happened before I even knew her. All right. And uh, the petitioner indicated that there has been no formal legitimation of the child. Is that correct? I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know. Have you gone through the DNA testing with the child? No, no, no. Okay. All right. Anything further, sir? No, ma'am. Okay. And uh, lastly, back to you, Miss North. You, you carry the burden. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, Mr. Brickley, if you'll go ahead and remute. Thank you. Is there anything further that you wish to add in rebuttal, Miss North? Um, I would like to object to the things that he was saying as far as the shooting. Um, those those statements that he made were a lie. He indeed did have his gun out. So how did I know this? So when I went back in the house to pack up my baby's things, the case that he hit the holster that he has his gun in, it was actually still sitting on the bed where my daughter was laying. So that's how I know. Yes, my baby did probably wake up crying. He went back there to check on her took her off the bed, took his gun out the holster and used the dog as a cover up as if he was walking the dog. 
again, like I say, I don't know who shot at who. I wasn't present. I was inside the house. So I don't know how that transpired outside. He did indeed snatch my phone when I tried to call the police. The reason I can say this because I start fussing and yelling, I want my phone. I want my phone because I didn't pay for this phone. My grandmother bought this phone. So he took my phone and as they was chasing him, there's an open field on the side of my building. My phone was laying in the wet grass on the side of the building from when they was chasing him through the apartment complex. So yes, he did take my phone. And when I went back inside, once they came back in and me and him was exchanging words, I say, Timothy, where's my phone? I don't know, I don't have your phone. Timothy, you took my phone, where's my phone? I don't know, it's probably outside somewhere. You need to go look for my phone, Timothy. Nope, that's your phone, you need to go look for it. Timothy, I didn't pay for that phone. That's how those words went about. So yes, he did take my phone. We was in the car, my friend never pulled out the gun. My friend, just to be honest, my friend was actually rolling a blunt when he walked up to the car. He was rolling a blunt. I was actually bending down to pick up the bottle to open it and drink out of it. When Mr. Brickley walked around to the passenger side of the car, his gun was still on his hip when he got out the car to make a phone call. His gun was still on his hip. He then took his gun off his hip when he got out the car. That's when he took his gun out. Mr. Brickley had already pulled out the gun, snatched my phone out my hand before my friend even got out of the car and made a phone call. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, having heard from all the parties, I am ready at this time to hear summation. So, oh, also, can I in, um, inject one more thing? Yes, ma'am. Also, that same day, he had made a fake profile of me posting my intimate pictures, like my pictures of what I used to post on my OnlyFans content and spreading vulgar lies about me. He followed a lot of my family members and my friends and they had to message me and ask me like, Asia, is this you? Are you really doing this? He also had recorded a video of me and my guy friend getting out in the car and was trying to persuade it and use it as like I was out prostituting in cars. That's the message she was putting on the video as if I'm leaving my baby in the house to go and prostitute in the cars and stuff like that to those nature. Um, and another thing I would never say he's not an actual physical threat to his daughter. No, but his actions can cause us to lose our home, um, can cause us to be hurt physically because of his actions. That's what I mean that he's a threat to my daughter. Okay. All right. Um, and what are you asking the court for today? I would like the restraining order to be extended. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Brickley, um, is there anything you wish to say in response? And what are you asking the court for today? Uh, as far as me pulling out my gun, like I said, I didn't pull out my gun until a gun was presented. I don't go looking for trouble. And what as are you asking the court for? A dismissal? Yes, ma'am. And as far as me taking her phone, I never took her phone. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Having heard the evidence presented by both parties, um, at this time, I am ready to make a ruling. I am going to continue to keep the protective order in effect for the next 12 months. It will expire naturally 12 months from today's date. That's going to be June 28th of 2024. The uh, petitioner will continue to have primary custody of, of the child, Trinity. Um, there is no legal claim from the respondent, so that'll have to be handled through the family court as far as visitation, um, should that happen at a later date. Um, the respondent is to undergo and complete the family violence intervention program, paying for those, and we'll meet with the compliance officer today in just a moment to sign up for that. And under federal law, Mr. Um, uh, Brickley, you are not allowed to possess a firearm. So if that was not given over to the Sheriff's Department at the time you were served with this uh, ex parte order, you will need to make arrangements to deliver that to the Sheriff's Department in order to be in compliance with this protective order. All right, these, this order will be mailed to the parties, emailed to the parties rather. Ms. Uh, North, you can go ahead and log off, Mr. Brickley. Parties and the subject of the pending suit affecting the parent-child relationship in Travis County. There are operative orders in place, those being temporary orders 
uh, from a hearing on April 4th of 2022. That was a Zoom hearing in front of Associate Judge Arth. Mm -hmm. The parties went back and forth with some draft uh, uh, versions of those temporary orders. We ultimately had to have a motion to enter hearing in front of Judge Arth. Um, the judge signed the operative temporary orders on that date. Um, and so, of course, what we're here for, Judge, are the four corners of the controlling document. We believe there's a valid subsisting order uh, governing possession and access of the child. Uh, my client is entitled to present possession of the child and therefore respondent is illegally restraining the child. The question really seems to be about extended summer possession and what is unique about these orders, these temporary orders, again, considering how young the child was at the time they were rendered, they do not afford Mr. Bloomling any extended summer possession. Um, he has something called a temporary possession order. That term is used on page six, and there's various different phases that Mr. Bloomling has graduated to. I saw those three phases in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's currently under phase three because that began on August 15th of 2022, and that starts on page seven of the temporary orders. And though he is awarded the term, the terminology of expanded standard possession order is utilized. It's my belief that Mr. Bloomling is interpreting that that gives him 30 days in the summer. But again, in the four corners of the document, he is not awarded any extended summer possession and for the court's knowledge, even at the motion to enter hearing, there's not a transcript, unfortunately, from the hearing, but it was Mr. Bloomling then represented by counsel's position that that 30 days should have been added. And so there were drafts that were done and Judge Arth heard the argument of counsel and rendered explicitly in the operative temporary orders that he was not to have extended summer possession. If the court wants to indulge, there's many communications that led up to this weekend informing Mr. Bloomling that he did not have extended summer possession uh, in somewhat sarcastic no, we don't, we don't need to get into the middle of all that. Here's our situation, Mr. Blooming. I have looked at this document. Let me hear from you. What's your situation? Why are we here today? Because this is, I'm trying to do this as painlessly as possible right now, but it's going to, the, the pain, Omar, the pain meter is going to go up as we continue down this road this week. So let's talk about, I'm, I mean, I'm bringing you all in here today because you've got a four-year-old child and that child's best interest is always what directs me. Yes, so I don't really think it's in his best interest for me to have him come here on Wednesday or on the alternative to have a deputy come get him on Thursday. So where are we with this, Mr. Blooming? Uh, Your Honor, the, the orders do clearly state that unless specific, explicitly stated otherwise, I am to follow the extended standard possession order. Under, I don't need to tell you the extended standard possession order. I get my, uh, the non-custodial parent gets the child in the month of July. I notified Ms. Hudnall on March 30th of my intentions. She has repeatedly restricted to me, uh, and I have this all very well documented, that she will not let me see the child for the, a minute longer than she is legally entitled to do so. I'm a teacher. I have the summers off. She is keeping our child from me at every opportunity that she gets. This, the document clearly states, unless explicitly stated otherwise, there is nothing in this document, regardless of how poorly it is written, that states anything about the summer. Because there's nothing explicitly stating the summer possession, then I am entitled to the ESPO. And the other, the last thing that I'll say about this is that in when this was uh, written, the phase two going into last summer would have been July, which is why there was no expanded standard possession order then. And I completely understand that. I have offered Ms. Hudnall a very generous schedule for the month of July so that we can go visit our daughter's grandparents in Florida. She has repeatedly kept our daughter from me at every turn. I get no updates. I get no photos. I don't get invited to dance recitals. It, it is not in the best child's interest. Ms. Hudnall is working in her best interest. Okay. I have pre right. I, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, Mr. Frazier, tell me where we are with this. What's the specific phrase in this document that's believe makes you believe that you're entitled your client's entitled to have this child back this summer sure judge that that mr bloomling has specific periods of possession the first third and fifth weekends of the month during the school term there's no extended summer possession and on page the bottom of page nine mm -hmm. top of page 10 there's possession the language says possession by jessica hudnell my client and it says jessica lee hudnell shall have the right of possession of the child at all other times not specifically designated in this possession order for corey f bloomling mm -hmm. mr bloomling is citing via this reference to the expanded standard possession order and online research extended summer possession that is not contained in the four corners of this document. I'm sorry, I completely disagree. It says it in the very beginning of phase three, preceding what you're citing. It says, unless explicitly stated otherwise, I am entitled to the extended possession. Extended, Your Honor, I, I, I will do, gladly do what you believe is in the best interest of our child. I have a very hard time believing that restricting access to both parents to a four-year-old is in the best interest of the child. She deserves to have a healthy bond between both parents. I have followed the temporary orders to a T. I am up to date on child support plus arrearages that Ms. Hudnall is taking from me. This is not in the best interest of our daughter. Okay. All right. So here's, um, here's, here's the situation. I'm not here to make a uh, best interest finding today the only thing i'm trying to do is follow the order as it's written and the order indicates that she gets the, the your child to be with her today so here's here's the only thing i can do at this point y'all and and it's not i know mr blooming I, I hear you and i hear the frustration in your voice and i i hear that you do care very deeply for your child the only thing is is that i'm just looking at the order as it's written not not kind of attacking the order outside of its four corners 
So the child does need to go to your wife today. Now, if that cannot be accomplished, then, then we got to come back on Wednesday and, and if and with your child here in court. And if he's not here on Wednesday, we got to send the deputy on Thursday. This is a four-year-old child. So I think we need to go on and put our differences aside right now and, and, and comply with the four corners of that document, even if we don't agree with it. Okay, Mr. Blooming, can, can you do that? Uh, just so I get, just so I hear you correctly, the the, ex the explicit standard possession order does not apply to this situation. Listen, you're, you just have to follow the four corners of that document okay. and 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 look at it. There's the bottom of page nine is where it's instructed. Yeah. So here's what oh, you. That's can not do. in the in phase three. Oh. We're in phase three. Okay. Here's what you can do if you're not happy with it. And I'm I'm gonna. I, I've read the order. I do think that it appears to me from the the plain language of that order that your wife has a child today. You can, if you want to attack some of that order, when you when you set up your final hearing, that would be your chance to have your attorney look at that. But today is not the day for that. I just have to go what's in that four corners of that document. And I have looked at it and I do believe that Ms. Hudnall is correct in this. So, all right. So here's what I'm going to suggest, Mr. Frazier, Mr. Blooming, Ms. Hudnall. The child does need to go back to mom today. Uh, if that does not occur, then we need to set a hearing on Wednesday and the child will need to come to the courthouse. If that does not occur, then we're going to have the deputies come out and pick up the child on Thursday. But yeah. right now, that's that's where we are right now. And I'll, I'll drive her over to her house right now. Your right, very good. Thank you for that, sir. I appreciate that very much. Um, that's obviously, um, you know, uh, it's 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 critical that that occur and, I, and it shows your care and concern for the child that you are willing to do that. And I'm very, very grateful for you doing that. All right. You all, I know this is not a, a terrific situation. We find ourselves in this July 3rd, but it's the best we can do right now. Uh, when you do have your uh, final uh, uh, hearing on this, there'll be an opportunity, I think, to, to question some of that order. But right now we have to go with what's written. All right, Mr. Blooming, please uh, get the child over there right now. Okay. My client's at my office, so she'll she'll leave immediately. So should we say noon? Does that sound okay, Ms. Hudnall? Can you confirm? Is that okay? It's um 1115. Uh, yes, noon. Yeah, your, your, your Honor, uh, if, if there's going to be just uh -huh. a little bit of a lag time, uh, my daughter and I make cupcakes this morning and we haven't put the icing on. So can I, can we make it 1215, 1230 and I can send her back with icing on her cupcakes? Yes, Your Honor, that'll be fine. Thank All right, let's do that. Okay, cupcakes and icing at 1230. Okay. 1230, Judge. And do you need, I'd, I'd like to probably have an order or do you think an order needs to be circulated, Your Honor, for the file? Uh, I think it probably does for the file. Um, yes. but I can draft and send a copy to Mr. Blooming for his review. And if we need some kind of entry hearing, which I'm sure won't be necessary, we could get with your court. That sounds fine. Uh, Ms. Hudnall? All right. Very good. All right, Mr. Frazier, Mr. Uh, Mr. Blooming, Ms. Hudnall. All right. I expect the child. Oh, I'm sorry. I, last second. I just want to make it clear. I am dropping our child off at Ms. Hudnall's residence. Is that correct? That's correct. At 1230. At 12, by 1230 today. So that gives you a little over an hour to get there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Thank all you right. so much. You all have a great rest of the day. Thank, Thank you. Good you. luck with everything. This 4th of July public service announcement has been brought to you by Time Served. On this 4th of July, please drink responsibly. Take care of your loved ones, or you will be floating down the river like this next defendant. This is time served. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Happy 4th of July. See you later, nerds. Assisting a peace officer by way of flight. You are also charged in the same case with drinking or possessing an open container of alcohol in public and then possession of a glass container in a park. These all alleged to have occurred on June 14th of this year in the area of uh, uh, 1505 Idlewild Drive. Do you understand each of those charges? Yes, Your Honor. How do you wish to plead to the obstructing and resisting charge? Uh, no contest. With that plea, Judge, I'll make a motion to dismiss both counts two and three. All right, thank you, Ms. Ginoli. All right, Mr. Beeson, do you understand that by entering that no contest plea, you'll be waiving your constitutional trial rights? There will be no trial on the matter. We'll proceed directly to sentencing. Yes, Your Honor. All right. And the city has agreed to dismiss the open container charge as well as the unlawful possession of a glass container at a park in exchange for your plea to the obstructing and resisting charge. I will accept your plea of no contest and find you guilty of obstructing and resisting the peace officer by way of flight. Ms. Ginoli? Your Honor, here law enforcement received a report that the defendant was at Idlewild, I believe, during food truck Friday and was running around naked. When law enforcement made contact with him, he rolled away from law enforcement and floated down the river where he was uh, thereafter caught by the Reno Fire Department. It appears that he's also being held or will be seen shortly, Judge, on a failure to register case out of the RJC. So he's probably got other things to be dealing with. I do not have his criminal history, Judge. His risk is a seven. I'm going to defer to you as to an appropriate sentence here. All right. Thank you, counsel. Mr. Conway. Your Honor, I just asked the court to consider a credit time served. It does sound like he has other things 
this is a case where you know he kind of actually it's uh, the flight was by river which you don't see very often but that's what he did he he uh, kind of jumped in the river and took off uh, that way floated down the river until someone was able to pluck him out of the water so i'd ask for credit time sir thank you mr conway mr Beeson. anything you would like to say before i sentence you sir you're not required to say anything but you are welcome to yes your honor i had just gotten a job Mavericks gas station three days prior to this um, was having some family issues and had a drink at the park and um, was swimming when I was approached and swam down the river and then was arrested down the river um, a mile down. So um, I would hope that I can get some community service or something to show that I'm trying to be a citizen again and get back into the society and get back to my job. All right. Did you have more than one drink, perhaps? It was a couple drinks, Your Honor. I'm just curious because people don't usually find themselves naked around Food Truck Friday swimming down the river in 50 degree water. So I, I got to chalk it up to something. It's either too much I, to drink. I or wasn't naked, was Your on. Honor. I was not naked. Well, that's what it that's what it describes here the person was completely naked i was in my jeans when they, they arrested me all right look uh seven days in jail is what you've already spent on this case it'll be credit for time sir good luck on your other case sir issues and had a drink at the park and um was swimming when i was approached and swam down the river and then was arrested down the river 